Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today we're gonna to talk about gimbals between $400 and $600, and is there anything better than the Wimberly WH200? Right after this. Today's video, we're gonna cover gimbal heads for wildlife photography, with the real theme around this Wimberly gimbal head, and can anything else on the table that I've got over here compete with it? These are all gimbal heads under $600, which is the theme of this review, $400 to $600 gimbal heads. If you wanna look at some more cost-effective gimbal heads, I have a video on gimbals under $400. You can check that out in the card above. Before we get started, let me just lay out the video for you. I'm gonna put chapters at the bottom. I'll do a little bit of an introduction. I'm gonna talk about setting up the gimbal head, and then I'm gonna get into each product. So if you're interested in just one of the products, feel free to skip to that chapter. If you want a comparison or if you have a short attention span, skip to the end. I'll just give you the nuts and bolts. And as always, I try to do a lot of research. I look at all of the comments made on these um, from B&H and Amazon on the reviews. I'm gonna give you the review scores, the specs on every lens. You'll see me reference down here once in a while looking at my monitor to get the numbers right, but I'll also put some graphics in here to help you out. So with that said, let's see what the Wimberly looks like and how it compares to the other gimbals that I have. Now, first we're gonna start with the setup. And one of the things I want you to notice with the way I have this setup is I've got an adjustment here on the plate and all of these will also come with an adjustment on the cradle. The cradle or swing arm is this piece right here. And it has an adjustment which will let me raise or lower the plate onto which it's mounted. When it's properly balanced, you'll be able actually not only to rest your lens, but you can actually tilt your lens. Now, I've got this pretty close. Now there's no tension on this, so it's free swinging. And because I've got it, you can see it's just a hair off, so I might have to adjust that. None of these are set to my lens because I don't own the equipment, I didn't mark it, but I would recommend once you've got it set, go ahead and mark your, your plates and your cradle arms at the specific spot that you need them for each lens. But you can see the basic premises. I've got it set so that for the most part, it will sit. Now you can also use this and I'm gonna lower this. You can also bottom this cradle out and let it swing freely where it will always return to the middle. But if you're doing a lot where you wanna point and leave it and be able to take your hand off, you are gonna to wanna to balance that correctly so that this lens foot gets raised so that the middle of the lens, the center of gravity of the lens, lines up with that pivot on the side. So that's a real quick introduction on how to get these set up but you are gonna to wanna to play around with it and make sure that it's balanced the way you like it. All right, now let's get on to the comparison. Now I'm gonna start with the Wimberly because that's gonna be the reference for all of the other gimbals. I'm gonna compare each gimbal essentially to this Wimberly. Now a couple specs about the Wimberly, it comes in at $595. It weighs three pounds, just over three pounds. It's 9.2 inches tall. And when I look at the ratings, they're unbelievable. It's got over 500 ratings on B&H and over 144 on Amazon. They're almost all perfect. Fives, uh, five on B&H, 4.9 on Amazon. So it's, it seems like a no brainer just by a Wimberly. And that's why so many people have bought it. It's reliable and it's also made in the US. And that's a big uh, talking point for some people. I will let you know the country of origin for all of these um, most of them are made in China. There's two that are not made in China, and this is one of them. Now, is there anything, uh, I, I can tell you, the Wimberly is smooth in both vertical and horizontal. I'm not gonna mention a lot of the other ones. They're all smooth in both axes. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that smoothness, but I will talk about anything that feels a little off. One of the, the real selling points of the Wimberly is when it locks out, it locks out quickly, and accurately, and there's no movement in the lockout. So when I set it to a position and I turn that lock, it firmly locks it exactly where it was. Um, there's been no, pro I couldn't find a review that said this failed at any point where any part of this broke or that there were any issues. And again, there's a lot of reviews to read. So I, I skimmed all of these reviews, but I read every negative review on this and there really weren't any. So is there anything is there anything wrong with it? Is there anything bad about it? The answer really is no. I couldn't find any fault with it. I am going to show you two, two little things real quick, though. I'll do a close-up of this. Um, so just let me pull this off before I get to the close-up. 
you're going to see the form factor of this is the design of many others. I'm going to show you one here that I'm going to re talk about in just a minute, the Enduro. There's another one by Benro. You can go on B&H or Amazon and you're going to find some really cheap knockoffs in the $50 to $200 range. I will recommend staying away from anything in the bargain budget price point. I did a, a poll on Instagram and I asked if there had been any failures on any gimbal head of any model. And I, I got no failures on anything except the bargain basement under $100 gimbals where they did break. And if you've got expensive gear on here, please make the additional investment. Look at the other reviews that I've done, but, but take some time and make sure you're not just trying to cut costs here. This is where your lens sits. It's often where you're carrying it. So if you throw this on your shoulder and you're moving around from spot to spot, if that fails, your camera's on the ground and you've cost yourself several thousand dollars. So don't cut corners. Now, I don't love this. There's two reasons I don't love it. And, and both of them are superficial and very specific to me. One, I don't like the design. I just don't like the way it looks. I know that's an aesthetic thing and it's the last thing that matters when you're talking about taking photographs, but I don't love the way it looks. So that's number one. It's an aluminum construction, by the way. You're gonna see some carbon fiber constructions. I don't have a problem with aluminum construction. Uh, carbon fiber will be a little bit cheaper. I just don't particularly like the way this looks. That's number one. Number two, everybody owns it. I'm also the guy that doesn't wanna own what everybody else owns. Everybody uses at the high end, gets so tripod legs and Wimberly heads. It's, it's just the standard go-to. There's, and there's absolutely no reason not to buy those two things. They're great products. However, I tend to like to be a little bit different in what I purchase, and that's just full disclosure. Now there's, I'll show you one more thing that is technically a little bit more pertinent to the design of this. I'm gonna have to show you a close up here. I'm gonna pull this in as close as I can without hitting anything else. And I think you'll be able to see this from this angle. All right, let me see if I can get refocused. There we go. Now, I want you to notice this. As I unscrew this, this pulls apart. So there's actually now a gap in between here. I'm going to pause for a second, and I'm going to bring up a, a physical picture of what this looks like. There it is. Now, I want you to just notice the construction. There's no bearings in here. All of the tension is controlled by friction. So as the knob pulls this together, that's what creates the lockout. And as it's loosened, that's what creates the swinging action. There's not a whole lot of tension control in this system. There is some. All right, now let's come back here and I'll show you kind of what it looks like in, in practical terms. This has a little bit of play in it. You can see it there. Now I've exaggerated it. You wouldn't ever have to pull it this far out. But there is a little bit of play in here. The only reason that I, I'm concerned with that at all is in a sandy environment, in a mucky environment, you could get little, I guess, like fine particles in this gap that is not true of all of the way that these uh, gimbals are designed. This one is designed that way. Several others are. Most of the other ones, though, stop and only let you loosen it a certain amount. This one, you actually can loosen it much more. And again, I showed you taking it apart so you get an idea of why that is. It's not that you would ever have it in this position where it's opened up all the way, but it, it does it does have this little gap there. That's all I could find wrong with it. It's not a big deal. I'm just telling you, I had to be super picky to find something. I try to find something about each thing that I like and something that I don't like. This I did not love. I didn't love this little gap. There is also, you can hear it, a little bit of play in between the housing and the cradle. So is it a concern? 509 people on B&H say it's not a concern. Nobody really cares about that. But I try to dig in and find something. And that's really the only thing about the Wimberley I could find. Now, I'm going to pause. I'm going to bring out some other gimbals. We're going to start at the lower end of the price point, And then we're going to work our way back up towards this $600 price point. So let's take a look at the next one now. Before I get into the Benro, which is going to be the first one that we look at today, I am going to show you what, what I set up as a gimbal. Some people ask, well, what do you use? Uh, this is the system I use. It's, it's different because I use a ball head with a side mounted adapter. 
in a side kick or a side mount configuration. I don't use the cradle arm. Um, I like this setup. It works very well for me. It's not that it's cheaper. Uh, this setup is a $700. So this actually costs $100 more than the Wimberley, but it's more versatile in that I can take it apart. I already own it. It's not the lightest setup. So this is not lighter or cheaper. It's just more versatile. I can put this on a different system. I can use this ball head separately if I want to. And honestly, after I'm done with this gimbal review, I may choose to buy a dedicated gimbal, but I'm gonna go through all of them first. And I'm gonna let you know which one I like at the end, but uh, I may make my buying decision based off of, in part, these reviews. So let's get into this Benro. A couple quick specs on the Benro. This one weighs only 2.4 pounds. It's a carbon fiber construction, which is unique to the group that I'm looking at today. It's got a, an, a load capacity rated at 66 pounds, and it's a little taller than the others at 9.7. Um, an interesting thing about the reviews, and I have to call this out, it's probably the biggest thing I wanna talk about with this, is the reviews on B&H come in at only four stars, which is the lowest in this group with 16 reviews. On Amazon, it's a 4.6, so much more respectable. But that review on B&H is skewed, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So I, I really need you to listen to that part of this because that's gonna be the most important thing about this Benro. Now, you're gonna see it's got the adjustable arm, just like all of the others have, and it's got a very smooth action here, horizontally and vertically, I had no problems. It is essentially a Wimberly type design. Um, but it's made of carbon fiber, so it's a little bit lighter. It's got a great weight to load ratio. So this has a lot of wins. In fact, it's almost $200 cheaper than the Wimberley. A lot of wins. I wanna talk quickly about these knobs because they're large and comfortable. I've got no problem. They're essentially the same size as the Wimberley knobs were. And I wanna look at this top knob real quick. This controls the vertical lockout. And when I loosen it, it's gonna swing, but notice Unlike the Wimberley, there's not as much play. In all of these systems where the tension is controlled, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm threading it here, I'm putting tension in here, and that's what's locking it out. In all of these systems, there's gonna be a little bit of play between this and this. So at this little joint right here, there's gonna be a tiny bit of play, some worse than others. Now, there is a separate design we're gonna look at in a minute, and you're gonna see it's a little different in that design. But fundamentally, these all work very similarly. So I lock this out there, and then I loosen it up here. Uh, one of the things about this that I will call out on all of these and tell you is how quickly can I lock this out? So let me put my lens on real quick. And why does that matter? Well, there's a fundamental difference in two of the designs. Some of these designs are going to lock out quickly. So that might be important to you if you're shooting in a situation where you need to point and lock quickly, you want about a half a turn or less. So some of these will lock out at a quarter turn, some will lock out at a half turn, some don't lock out until almost a full turn or more. So that, that can be critical depending on what you shoot. Now this one will do about a half a turn. So again, I'm here, I'll turn it this way so you can see. It's all the way loose. And it, unlike the Wimberley, I can't over loosen this. It will not allow me to loosen this more. So I'm here. It's about a half a turn and it's locked out. So real smooth action, lockouts work well, knobs feel good. Aesthetically, do I love the blue trim on it? Personally, I don't. Personally, I don't. But if you like it, sure, it works for you. Uh, one of the other things about this, it does include a bubble level. The Wimberley does not have a built-in bubble level. Some tripods have that built in, so it may not be an important feature for you. And this one does include a mounting plate. One of the complaints about the Wimberley, um, not really with the design, but the fact that it doesn't include a mounting plate. So many of these will just come with a small, and I don't have it here, but just a small uh, plate, some a little bit longer than others that, that will uh, is made for their specific. But these are all Arca Swiss compatible, so you don't have to use their plate. You can use any Arca Swiss plate that you're comfortable with. On my camera, you'll notice it's built right into the foot, which is very, very convenient. I always encourage people, if you've got a, a couple extra bucks and you can switch your foot out to an ARCA compatible foot, go for it. It works real well. Now, let me talk about that review real quick. The negative reviews, there were three reviews at one star or two stars. And the complaint was, 
in the bottom, in the base of the bend rope, where these threads are down here, they were sunk into the base too far. So what would happen on certain tripod manufacturers, there wasn't a lot of threads in here for them to catch. Essentially, it would only give you one turn before it would fall off. So I'm gonna lock this out, okay? I'm gonna turn it one time around here, and then it was off. That's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of thread catching the inside. So the bolt and the thread just don't have a lot that they're locking into. Now, I am convinced, those reviews are from 2018, 2019. I'm convinced that Benro has addressed that and it is no longer the, the case. So watch this, that was my one turn, two full turns, it's still on there. Two and a half, three, almost three turns. That is about the same as all the other ones, by the way. So I'm getting two and a half to three turns to lock this down, which now is not is no longer a concern. So when you take the B&H reviews and you take out those old reviews, when these threads were probably an issue, the rating comes back up to a 4.7. I'm gonna show you the bottom of this. And you'll see here, let me just get focused there. You could see the stainless steel insert. Now that's, that's a good feature. Most of, uh, most of the gimbals in this price range will have a stainless steel or brass insert here. Uh, let me see if I can get the camera to catch it again. But you can see the threads start immediately. So they're not recessed inside the base. They're right there flush at the end. So again, it looks like that concern from 2019 was addressed. And now you've got a, a, a gimbal head that would review much, much differently today. So I like this one a lot. It is just over $400. From a value standpoint, I think it, it's it's really something to look at. It's light with a good load capacity and all the features. What I don't like about it, actually not much, I don't love the blue trim. <laughs> so if I'm being if I'm being nitpicky, that's probably the one thing about this that turns me off a little bit. It's just not aesthetically what I personally like. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Now, next on the list is the Enduro. Now you're gonna notice I'm not gonna put this one on yet. I'm actually gonna thread this one on. Unlike the Ben Road, which had the complaints, the Enduro is countersunk a little bit more than all the others. So remember the, uh, the Ben Road we looked at two and a half to three full turns to thread it? I'm gonna start threading this. And, okay, there it is. Now let's see how many turns we get out of it. One, and just a little bit more. So I'll lock it out. I'm gonna unlock it now. Okay, there's the one turn and there it's off so not even one and a half turns so with this it might be a little bit of a concern one of the things that's interesting to note is that the enduro is made by the same parent company as benro so these are probably more than likely sharing components made in some of the same factories and a lot of the technology is going to be the same as well as some of the build features um, that you find now i'm going to make this review pretty quick this seems a lot like a, another model Benro that is about $50 less, $75 less. While I like the knobs on the Enduro better, it may be a little better built in some areas. I don't see a $75 difference. I'm not even gonna bother putting my camera on for this one. I will tell you, if you own it, there's nothing wrong with it. The action is very smooth in both the horizontal and vertical. It's very, very smooth. But what I can't do is justify paying $75 more for what felt like a very similar product, especially knowing that those threads were countersunk a little bit more than I'd like. So for me, this was the lowest rated gimbal that I, I looked at amongst this group, simply for the, the threads being kind of countersunk that I didn't like, and also the fact that I think you can just get it cheaper in the Benro model that I reviewed earlier. So I'll put a picture of that Ben row up and you could compare it to this. You'll see that a very similar design. And again, knowing that they're made uh, likely by the same people, maybe even in the same factory, that could factor into my decision. Uh, I just didn't see the value in paying the extra $75. While I do think it has some nice finishing touches on it, um, I just didn't warrant the price difference. So I'm gonna pull this one off. We're gonna jump through that one quickly and get to the next one. There were a few gimbals I was really curious about. Every 
every time I get my hands on product, there's normally one or two that I'm like, oh, I really want to try this out. Maybe because I've seen the brand or other people are recommending it or it looks cool or yeah, it's got some special feature. Talk about the Leo Photo. This is a PG-1, costs $258. As I'm running through these specs, I'm going to show you a couple close-ups of this because the design you can see is significantly different than the Wimberly style gimbals. This one is rated to hold 55 pounds. It only weighs 2.2 pounds. This is actually one of the lightest of this entire group. 9.7 inches tall. The B&H rating is 4.5. The Amazon rating is uh, 4.9. Only four reviews on B&H. So let's talk about the design of this. I'm going to bring this one up so we can look at it a little bit closer because I do want to show you some of these features. All right. Now, first thing you notice, uh, the aluminum is machined much differently than the others. So immediately, that's just a difference in design. Structurally, I don't think there's any problems. I want to reference my Promedia. Promedia, a, a more expensive style. You'll see a, a similar look. Also notice the dial here is on the top, very similar to the Promedia gear. So a, a similarity here. Not necessarily direct copycat, but a similarity in styles. I do want to show you one of the biggest differences with this uh, gimbal. It moves very freely. So no problem. I, again, any of these had very smooth action here and here. Now let's talk about these tension controls and what you are either going to like about this or not like about this. Of all of the gimbals that I've tested, this had the most adjustment in tension. It had the finest control in tension. So I'm going to slide this back a little bit. I'm going to put my camera on and I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is the biggest advantage of this and also the biggest disadvantage. It really depends on what you like. I'll turn it this way so we can see. All right, here we are. Now, what I want you to notice is I'm going to lock this out. I'll tilt it a little so you can see when it locks out. Okay, so there I'm locked out. Watch how long it takes me to unlock this. So remember, the other ones were about a half a turn. So I'm half a turn, half a turn. Okay, it's getting loose. It's not, it's not swinging freely yet. Another half a turn and another half a turn. So now it's swinging freely. So it takes about two turns of this knob for it to lock out. So again, swinging freely, one, two, a little bit more, and I can really ratchet it down now. Is that good or bad? Well, let me, here's the deal. For me, I like it. Because what it does in between those two turns is give me a lot of fine control and how much tension I like on this. I can let it swing loose, or I can give it just a little bit of resistance. Just a little bit of resistance. And I can keep adding that resistance. And I can even semi-lock it out so it kind of holds in place real well. Now again, this isn't balanced, so if it was balanced, it would lock, it would hold in place easier. But it gives me a little bit of resistance until I want to lock it out. I don't know if that's a big deal. So for the way I use a gimbal is, is almost always for birds in flight. If I shot owls or mammals or big game, maybe you have a different preference. Maybe you want a quick lockout. If you want a quick lockout, this is not the gimbal for you. If you want fine control, this could be the gimbal for you. At $458, it's $150 cheaper than the Wimberley. It's also constructed differently. So one of the key points about this is this has a tension knob on top. I'm going to, I'm going to try to vis visibly show you how this works. Inside here is a clamp, so think of a C. There's a rod coming from this through the clamp. This knob tightens up this clamp, so as, the, as it's turning and getting threaded, this clamp comes together and tightens down, that's what's giving you that fine control. The tension is not coming this way, like this pushing against this, it's coming from that clamp being tightened down onto what's inside. I took apart the uh, Promedia gear, it's designed the same way. Uh, there's bearings, sealed bearings inside both. I like those designs. Those are, to me, those are better designs 
but again, they don't lock out as quickly. So the Promedia gear and this have more turns involved. The knobs are a little bit smaller. They're not rubber coated. So in extreme cold environments, if you're touching them barehanded, you're gonna notice a difference. But that's really the only thing that I can find negative about it. I really, really, really liked this one. Um, I've been impressed with Leah Photo's other products. I did a monopod review. I really liked their monopod. Um, I really liked this gimbal head. And it might be because it's similar to what I've been using with this top knob. Again, if you need it to lock out quickly, this one's not going to do it. So something to consider. I think it's good value. If you like the fine adjustment, it's a great choice. If you want something that locks out quick, look at one of the other gimbals we're going to talk about today. All right. I think that's all I got for that one. Let's go on to the next one. I told you I was curious about the Leo photo. This is actually the one I was, I was most curious about. I brought this up close, so it's got a, a much, much different design. Now, this is uh, by a company called Photo Pro. I have never used any of their products or touched any of their products. This is their E6H. It's $529. It is only two pounds. This is the lightest and it is only seven and a half inches tall, by far the shortest. So it's got this really low profile. I reviewed a Sure PH10 that had a similar low profile. This has some absolute great qualities. It's also got some terrible qualities for a wildlife lens. I'm, they're going to stand out really, really quickly. We're going to take a little bit of time to talk about these because this one is the most interesting to me. Now, it only has a load capacity of 22 pounds. Is this for a dedicated wildlife photographer? The answer right up front is no. It's, it's, it's just not the best gimbal for wildlife. The biggest factor for that is, like the Suray in my other video, this swing arm or cradle is so short that you can't, let me loosen this up, there we go. You can't effectively use it. So I'm gonna put this in, I'm tighten this up, and I want you to notice, let me make sure I get it in there. I'm just gotta be very, very careful here. Sometimes I get sloppy when I'm uh, distracted doing other things. There we go. Um, so notice the center of gravity is above the fulcrum. And what happens in this situation, there's really no way around it. You can't balance it. Once it tilts, it's going to flop or it's going to flop back. So right off the bat, if you're a wildlife photographer, this isn't the one. So why am I, why am I even talking about it? Well, this is by far the most versatile. If I was selling this, if I was marketing this, the versatility of this is unbelievable. Now I showed you that the, the balance doesn't work, but they have designed this with a lot of interesting features. It is really designed for a landscape photographer. So bear with me as I show you this. It's got a huge bubble level up here. Uh, the, the bubble level is about this big. Landscape photographers really do re rely on, on a flat area. So the bubble levels is a, is a good feature. It's got the ability, and I'll show you here, it's got a little button here. And when I click that, watch the, the whole gimbal rotates to 45 degrees. I can also, anywhere in between, lock it out. So I'm using a tension knob over here to lock it out. Now why, does, why would anyone need that feature? It's, it's really not a, land, a wildlife feature. It's a, it's a landscape feature. When you're doing uh, panoramic shots and you're stitching them together, there's something called a nodal point. And I don't want to get into a huge explanation on this, but essentially it means that if you can get the lens balanced to, on, on the rotational axis, if you can put the lens on the, its nodal point and rotate it around there, your panoramic image will stitch together correctly. If not, you get these bumps in it. I would encourage you, again, I'm a wildlife photographer. I don't do a lot of this. You can Google that one. Maybe I'll even put a link in there of if I find a, a good article on that. Um, but that's essentially what this helps you do. So it's got this feature built in. Wildlife photographers, not a big deal. Landscape photographers, really, really nice feature. It also is the only one that this plate here allows you to 
take it off. Let me just, it's got a safety feature that I'm going to show you in just a second. So I want to make sure that I show you that. Okay. But now look what it looks like. This is an Arca plate. The others do not have Arca plates built in here. This is dovetailed for Arca. So this is removable. And now you've got an Arca plate here that you don't have here. It's got a couple of neat safety features. I'm going to show you the close up here. This uh, clamp that locks in and out and this one have this feature that I've never seen on another one. I'm not sure I may have to get in closer here. See if we can get the lens to pick this up. Sometimes the camera doesn't want to uh, focus as close. All right, I think you could see it there. And there's a little button here. When I go to unlock this, it's going to stop and force me to push that button and then finish. So it basically, and you'll hear it click there. So basically it protects you from unscrewing this accidentally and having it fall out. It forces you to push that button in and finish the process. I really like that feature. Now, in this configuration, watch what you can do. You lose the cradle or that swing arm. Again, push the button, lock it out, tighten it back in. But now when it's correctly balanced, it's a side mount gimbal. You lose a little bit of range of motion. So you can see I don't get the full range of motion, but I've got an extremely compact gimbal, an extremely compact gimbal, a very light gimbal, a very well-made gimbal a very versatile gimbal. So who is this one for? Uh, right away, I told you, man, if you're a landscaper, or, I'm sorry, if you're a wildlife photographer, this probably isn't the one for you. If you're a traveling wildlife photographer, if you don't need the full range of motion, which uh, quite honestly, I don't know that I've ever shot at an angle higher than this from a gimbal. I, I don't know why anyone would shoot straight up with a gimbal, but if that's important to you or straight down. If that's important to you, consider it. But if you're, a, if you're a traveling photographer who does landscape and does wildlife, man, this is like, this is like a great little gimbal. Super light, easy to carry, use it in your landscapes. It's got that, that tilting axis, which is super versatile. And again, for doing panoramics and stuff like that, boom, it's right there. If, you, if you're comfortable shooting in this side mount position, you don't have any problems with balance. So now it's perfectly balanced anywhere you go. It's a nice little setup. So I would consider this if, again, for travelers or for hybrid photographers, people that are doing both landscape and wildlife, uh, consider the Eagle or the Photo Pro E6H. I think it's the most versatile thing that I've tested today. This is the part of the video where I, I usually put my favorite on here and explain why. I'm leaving this blank for now. It's a little tougher this time around. I, I do want to mention there's two other gimbals not shown that fall into this price range. The Sure PH30. I didn't, I didn't bother to get a sample of this. I've done the PH10 and the PH20. The PH30 is a bigger model. It looks very similar to the Benro in terms of being carbon fiber. There weren't any real flaws with the PH20. The only thing I can tell you is there was uh, some comments from, about Sure as a company uh, made in China, but their uh, customer service was not responsive as some of the other companies. The other one that I did not review, but I want to point out is the Jobu. It's the DMG HD4. This is a, a very similar looking to the Wimberley. It's got this design. I did. I reviewed the Junior 3, which is the smaller version from Jobu, it gets great reviews. The Jobu HD4 gets great reviews. Um, it is made in, in Canada. So I told you all, everything here was made in China, with the exception of Jobu made in Canada and Wimberley made in the United States. I would ask you to take a look at Jobu because I've gotten very good um, feedback from people who use those products. Because I've done the Junior 3 and this is just a bigger version of it, I didn't feel the need to. You can check out my review on the Junior 3, again, from that other video uh, to get an idea of what I liked and didn't like about that. Now let's see which one I like the most. Well, value, it was the Benro. 
Uh, I think this is the best value here. Carbon fiber construction, it felt really good. I told you the concerns with the reviews. If you get scared off about that 4.0 review on B&H, don't be. They fixed the, the issue down here. Um, and I thought this was the best value of the group. Which one would I personally choose? Now this got a little bit tricky and I'm not gonna make a decision yet. There's a couple more that I wanna review over $600 and I'm gonna do that soon. But I'm looking right now that for me, I like the aesthetics of this and I like the friction control up here. And I'm not a guy that felt the need to lock it out all the time. Uh, you can loosen it up with one turn and get a very functional pivot. But again, to lock it out, it required a little bit more. So, and then there's the Wimberley. These would be the three that I recommend if you are the conservative type who just wants to make a great purchase and not have any buyer's remorse. If you want to look like everybody else on the street that's shooting with the Gitzo legs and the Wimberley head, just do it. Like if, if you're just, if you're not a risk taker, you can't go wrong here. It is more expensive. The Leo photo is $140 less. The Benro is $165 less. But if you want to spend the $600 on this and just get a solid, a solid gimbal, do it. Probably not my choice, by the way. I am going to review a couple more next time. I'm going to get back to the desk. I'm going to show you the specs on all of these real quick uh, in summary. And, and, and I will let you know, I've got one more review coming up. I'm going to hold off or hold on to the Wimberley. And I'm going to compare this against some gimbals over $600 to see how it compares. That review will be coming up soon, but I'll get back to the desk and wrap up now. That's the gimbal review, $400 to $600, comparing the Wimberley. Now, what I've done is I've put a chart down here at the bottom. This is going to give you all of the key stats that I looked at when I reviewed these gimbals. Hopefully, you appreciate the time it takes to read all these reviews and try to give a real informed opinion about these. Um, and I'm just going to move through them very, very, very quickly now for those that skipped kind of to the end for the conclusion. Uh, the Benro, I thought to be probably the best value. Don't be uh, frightened by the lower ratings on B&H. They included a lot of old reviews that dealt with a concern about threads that was addressed. So that's no longer a concern. So I feel really, really good about that Benro. Uh, the Enduro kind of skipped through that pretty quickly because it reminded me a lot of a Benro that I reviewed last time. So check out my review up here. I'm gonna, I'll put a graphic over here so you can see the other Benro that I'm referencing now. It's about $75 less as I recall, and very, very similar in terms of design. So there really wasn't anything other than brand loyalty. If you, if you own Enduro and you like Enduro, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this gimbal. It is smooth, it locks out well. It just reminded me a lot of the other cheaper Benro. Um, and that's probably where I would have gone. Leo Photo was one of my favorites. I liked the tension control. It's got a lot of fine tension control, but if you need a gimbal that locks out quick, Leo Photo is not the one for you. Uh, it's very, very lightweight. I like the way it looks. It's machined differently than the others. Uh, and for me personally, we all have our uh, affinity. We all like certain things, even cosmetically, we like the way certain things looked. I like the way this looked and I like the way it performed and I thought it was well made. So it's got that different adjustment on top. Again, applying pressure to a clamp. That is what gives you that, that really fine tension control, whereas the other ones have that large knob on the, on the side. So you tighten that up, it's pulling things together and it's locking them out very quickly without as much fine control in between. I mentioned the Sura, Sura PH30 at uh, $500. I put it into this mix. I didn't review it, but it is something to consider. So if you're looking in this price range, uh, it might be something to look at. The Photo Pro, by far the most versatile and interesting to me. If you are a landscape photographer who also does wildlife or a wildlife photographer who also does landscape, this, this really should be on your list to look at. It's got a lot of cool features. If you're, if you're more curious, skip back through the video and watch those features. But I thought this to be the most versatile by far and, and the smallest, most compact and easiest to travel with. So, and it, it absolutely can work as a wildlife lens or as a wildlife gimbal. You can take this with you and it will absolutely perform as a wildlife gimbal. It is not, however, designed specifically for large lenses. You can adapt it to work with large lenses, but it's not really designed for large lenses in its primary purpose. But uh, really, really interesting. I enjoyed getting my hands on that. The Jobu DMG HD4, $535, made in Canada. 
the Jobu products in general, the gimbals have been very well received, very well rated, um, and have nice brand loyalty. Their customer service is very good. So that's one that we should put in here. I didn't review it, but I wanted to include it in this mix. I reviewed the Junior 3 by Jobu, and I like that one. And then finally, we have the Wimberley. Uh, like the gold standard, the, the, it's, it's what everything else really gets compared to, and that's what I did this video around. If, you, if you're playing it safe and you just want, hey, I'm going to spend $600 and I just need something that I never have to worry about, this is going to do it for you. Aesthetically, I don't like it the best. Uh, there's a little bit, a tiny little bit of play in between the cradle and the head, but you know, so minimal, it's probably nobody would even notice it. So I was really nitpicking to try to find something here. Um, really, it's just the money. Are you going to pay a little bit more? for the name and the quality construction made in the USA, or can you get away with the equivalent or a lookalike, something like the Benro that I reviewed earlier at almost half the price? So there are some better values out there, I think, than the Wimberley. So if you don't have the budget, don't worry. There's some good product out there under $400. But in this price range, I would say the safest bet really is, is that Wimberley at $600. Not the best value. Best value uh, Benro for me personally, I like the Leo photo and probably the safest choice is that Wimberley. Now I am not picking a gimbal yet. I am going to purchase a gimbal, but I'm not doing it yet. I've got one more review to do. So look forward to that. And as always, thank you for your support in the channel. And I hope we can, can and I hope <laughs> we can continue to find inspiration. I'm not even going to cut that out. I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.